All right. Thanks a lot for joining. Uh, let's chat about surviving the regional failures. So first speaker slide. Let me introduce amazing end user of the project we are going to talk about. Nuno. And creator of KHEV, Yuri. Thank you. So, show of hands, who ever heard about KGB, the Kubernetes Global Balancer, before? Amazing. Much more people than I expected. I appreciate it. <laughs> so, what is KGB? Kubernetes Global Balancer, open source project, Sandbox One. It is designed to uh, solve the global server load balancing uh, problem and challenge in cloud native world. So uh, it is running on top of Kubernetes. It is designed to be as simple to use as possible. It uh, just uh, reconciles a single CRD of JSLB type. Uh, it, is, uh, it doesn't require any management cluster, so that's a strong uh, point of the solution. And no, inherent no single point of failure. So, and design, design on top of well battle tested DNS protocol and supports some. Um, uh, a pretty good set of uh, global load balancing strategies. So a little bit of project history and context to why it was even created. So uh, it was originated in APSA, and APSA is an amazing South African bank I had a honor to work for. And uh, they are running, uh, I believe is still running, a huge Kubernetes uh, uh, fleet, more than 100 clusters, and they require some form of JSLB solution that is cloud native, so that is aware of Kubernetes primitive, what is happening down to the pod health level. And uh, uh, back in up, so we needed uh, geographically uh, a solution that would steer the traffic to geographically dispersed clusters. And this geography uh, ca could mean like different data centers on prem or different regions. Uh, in AWS Cloud, or actually a mix of them. Uh, we tried to find some proprietary vendor solutions. There was nothing that was cloud native enough, uh, and uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, most of the solutions, global, balancing, uh, uh, glo global load balancing one, they are relying on a simple, simple straightforward HTTP checks, and that's it's just not fast enough for cloud native world. So that's why we decided to. Uh, built a, a solution from scratch, and it was uh, something that we uh, developed in open from day zero. So it wasn't something that was born internally. Uh, we uh, and then open sourced. We uh, were starting it uh, as a OSS project uh, from the very first day, and I think it uh, very positively positively affected the overall design of the project. And we never made any shortcuts. So, uh, in a nutshell, uh, how it works, right? Uh, very, very simple uh, thing. You have uh, at least two clusters that are geographically dispersed. Uh, you, in this specific example on the diagram, you have one cluster in the European region or data center, or uh, another one, a secondary one in the United States. Uh, we are running KGB controller on both of the clusters, so we are putting uh, KGB next to your application workload. So again, no control cluster, no separate management layer. Everything is distributed. And uh, we integrate it with uh, some environmental DNS. And this uh, diagram, it is routed to three, but it's just one of the examples. You can integrate with virtually any kind of DNS server, depending uh, on your environment. Uh, assuming uh, workload for some reason, dies on the first primary, uh, primary cluster, and it cannot recover itself on standard Kubernetes manner, uh, then uh, KGB is smart enough to steer the traffic to the secondary cluster, and basically it makes your application globally highly available. So that's roughly the thing. Uh, uh, it's worth to mention the kind of like a core principles that uh, uh, were imprinted into the project from a very, very first day. And thanks to Donovan from APSA uh, for actually put it on paper on a, uh, even before we started to like cut it up. So it should be Kubernetes native, meaning it relies on the Kubernetes primitives as much as possible. So we are not reinventing the wheel. We are not creating some additional health checks. We are designing, we are checking the pod health status just out of the standard Kubernetes service primitive. No service endpoints available. It means that pods are dead and application is, not, is malfunctioning, right? We have uh, 
as sim simple as possible interface as possible, single CRD, uh, that, that is tightly coupled with a very standard ingress uh, uh, Kubernetes object. Again, no control cluster is very powerful, so we distribute the uh, solution next to the workloads, and it makes the solution itself highly redundant. Based on DNS, so yeah, DNS, uh, DNS runs internet. We obviously also inherited some DNS limitations we will talk about later, but overall, it's uh, very reliable stuff. Uh, environment agnostic, so uh, we are trying to be uh, as much as independent uh, from environment as possible. So for to integrate KGB into environment, you need a very simple stuff, is a zone delegation. Uh, meaning that just a couple of NS records on your environment DNS, like RAT 3 from the previous diagram, and uh, it is NS type record and a glue records, and that's it. And it is usually done automatically by the KGB solution. So uh, to the user interface, uh, really just one single CRD, and the user, as you can notice, it has like a embedded standard ingress in its spec, and a strategy se section that is uh, dedicated to uh, actual glo uh, global load balancing strategy. So here, uh, the mandatory ones are actually like just a type. And in case of failover, we also need to assign a primary geotech. The TTL times, they are just uh, something to override the defaults. So they are not uh, so important uh, to start uh, with uh, enabling global load balancing. So basically, you're just dropping in uh, this uh, custom resource uh, and assuming KGB is installed on your cluster, at least two clusters, it will work. Uh, it will create a, a really global load balancing strategy for you and steer the traffic. And you instantiate uh, GSLB kinds on both of the clusters. So they will uh, be able to discover each other. If you already have a form or some form of Helm charts, for, for example, your development teams already have a, a standard uh, uh, application package, right, including the ingress. So, and you maybe don't even want to teach them yet another new CRD, even single one. There is a possibility just to put the annotations, uh, KGB, KGBIO, and uh, it, the controller will pick it up and create CRD automatically in the background. So your development teams or um, people who are dealing with ch Helm charts don't even need to learn that stuff. So that just uh, declare uh, uh, the, geo uh, the strategy and associated geotext, and it will, it will just work. So and very simplistic. And we're doing gateway support next, right? Yeah, get, gateway support is uh, on the roadmap. So gateway also knows this kind of ingress v2. We are trying to follow the latest versions of uh, uh, cloud native APIs. So yeah, it's definitely on the roadmap right now. Load balancing strategies, so actually the core uh, uh, functionality. So we started initially with a simple round robin and a failover. And I think they're still the most popular strategies that the people are using. So round robin, you have two clusters, and you put them into GSLB. Uh, uh, you, you put GSLB CRs on both of them. And uh, after that, the DNS uh, responses are going to be uh, provided in a random manner, right? So from both clusters, non-predictable by design. Failover is, very, is most popular, probably straightforward. The one that uh, we showed in diagram, you have a primary cluster, secondary cluster, assuming the workload is dead on a primary one, it will steer uh, uh, the traffic to a secondary one. When workload is healthy again, it will steer it back. Super straightforward. Then, after project matured, uh, we uh, got some more advanced load balancer strategies, like a weighted round robin. And thanks, Michal, if you're watching it, uh, for implementing this. It's uh, actually very advanced statistical algorithms behind. And we can uh, uh, apply the weights on two associated uh, cluster geotechs. And this way, predictively uh, balance the traffic between uh, multiple locations. And uh, GOP strategy, thanks, Dinar, for implementing it. Uh, the, it is kind of, mm, uh, it is more uh, classic uh, in terms of uh, uh, finding the closest uh, geographical cluster, so like from global traffic management perspective. But it's tricky to implement because it requires a crafted GOP compatible database 
and it also has a strong environment requirement of your DNS uh, solution, DNS resolver, to have a, a DNS zero extension. So uh, it is to propagate the client subnet to actually make the load, DNS based load balancer aware uh, from where the client is coming from. So it is doable, it, it is working, but it has much more dependencies than uh, another strategies. So, uh, Supported integration. So, as was as was uh, it was mentioned, uh, KGB can work on any uh, uh, CNCF conformant Kubernetes cluster, no restrictions, and pretty much any ingress controller. So, we heavily tested on a most popular ingress and a traffic, uh, but there is no technical limitation to not to work on any ingress con uh, controller that is compatible with uh, standard APIs. And uh, for uh, external DNS, meaning like the integration into the providers, so the, in, into the environments that you are running. So originally, it's the project that started back in Upsa, as I mentioned, and we used to have an info block, so that's the first uh, integration we implemented. Then we went to a, a public cloud support, so it's AWS Route 53, and then we had an amazing experience with the partners, with the guys from NS1. And then we developed uh, RFC uh, 2136, so basically an ability to uh, work with any uh, DNS, uh, classic one like a uh, bind or Windows DNS, so you can hook into the DNS process and uh, create the zone delegation automatically. Uh, and uh, you can integrate virtually in any environment. And uh, what's coming next is Azure Public DNS support, uh, and it will be released really soon. We already have a code working, and you will see it today. For observability standpoint, we obviously were thinking about day two operations, and uh, we had a uh, pretty rich metrics uh, around the reconciliation loop of the uh, GCLB type and associated traces. So, uh, open telemetry uh, compatible events are getting propagated through RTL collector. And thanks, Alturgy, for implementing it. That is an amazing contribution. So uh, usually at this point, uh, when I deliver in KGB-related talks, I am showing the live demo. But today, I have an amazing end user with me, so I can just relax. You know, stage is yours. Thank you very much. So for those of you who don't know Millennium BCP, we're the largest privately owned bank in Portugal, so from South Africa. Second biggest, second biggest user is Portugal, banking as well. Our goal at Millennium is to use five um, geographical uh, regions in Europe, covering Azure, GCP, and on-prem regions as well, and to basically do the same thing throughout all of those regions. And by saying the same thing, it's infrastructure as code and GitOps. What that means is that, for instance, our developers don't particularly care where things run. That's on the infrastructure teams to ensure. What our developers ensure on their side is that their output gets converted to an OEM file, an open application model definition file. And then Infra picks up that file and does things. Some of those things include by using GitOps to pull that file into a management cluster, having Kubvala and Crossplane spin up everything that needs to be spun up. And that includes geographical distribution. Yeah, maybe if I can interfere, it's an amazing Please. combination of Crossplane and KGB. I couldn't not to mention it. I still need my hotel to be paid. <laughs> <laughs> well said, well yeah. said. And, and even if KGB is simple, to integrate, honestly, our users don't care about it. Their thing, our application, just runs. What we typically use in terms of run environments is this sort of pattern where there's a management cluster somewhere that runs, well, management planes, things that need to be, well, they have a state that needs to be backed up, for instance, cross-plane, Kubvala, and other planes. And the only thing that those management clusters do is spin off things to run clusters and the run clusters themselves. For us, a run cluster is a pair of Kubernetes clusters. That's how we ensure those 9995 SLOs. 
and they are not only multi-zone, they are multi-region. So for instance, at this pair, one of them is in Azure North Europe, the other one is in Azure West Europe, and KJV does its thing. Let's see how. So the URL is live, you can hit it now if you want, and code is in this URL down here. Feel free to browse if and when you guys want to. So maybe while you uh, firing it up, worth to mention that it's a very similar case that we had in APSA and you have in a Millennium BCP that uh, our applications are getting deployed on top of at least two clusters just by default, and it, uh, it is totally transparent to the users, right? So they just by default globally available. And uh, this global availability is driven by KHB. Yeah. So quick overview of the code you can find in these repos. You'll find a repo called IAC, and here we are just spinning up the resources for the demo, uh, network, key vault, management cluster, and a very long, or not, Terraform piece of code to call that high availability AKS module. And not going into too much detail, what we have here are two instances of Terraform that basically spin up a cluster, get Flux into it, get external DNS going, get the external secrets operator in there, and generate also the initial files for GitOps, which is the other repo next to this one. So here in cluster config, these folders that you see, run north and run west, were generated by Terraform. And in the end, what we have here in the Azure portal are two run clusters one in North Europe, the other one in West Europe, and we'll be targeting those two clusters. Since all of this is automated and no one actually ran kube control whatever into those clusters, we also needed to take care of deploying KGB there. So what we do is to you know, imagine it. We have a folder in the Git repo for KGB, and namespace stuff, and a generalized Helm release definition for Flux to pick up that basically has some variables for cluster geotag and the pair geotag for that cluster, customize, puts the right values there, and hold and behold, we have two clusters connected to each other some control plane ran that Terraform module, and we were up and running. And by the way, this is how we do service continuity and disaster recovery. We just spin up two new clusters if any of those two fail. No worries in recovery, so to speak. This means that when we deploy an application using GitOps to this pair of clusters, and for this demo we're using Hello Kubernetes, a uh, Docker image. Besides doing just the standard Helm release for that app, and well, the only thing here worth noticing is this app will just say welcome from Kubernetes, and there's a variable there for a cluster name. We are also deploying that CRD. Same thing that was in the previous slide, just saying primary geotag is North Europe, type is failover, that's that. And getting here, we could do it like this, putting the CRD in to get, we could do a customized patch if we had ingresses already declared in the repo. Now it's up to you, thing is, it's one file, either GSLD, CRD, or my patch. With this in place,
<laughs> With this in place, I knew that was kind of going to break, so welcome to my curl test. Is the stuff accessible? No. Just in time. Security threat? What is it? What is it? All right. It's blocked by uh, conference organizers. No, that's <laughs> cool, isn't it? So, access point? Uh, which uh, Wi-Fi? Uh, no, it's on wait, cross maybe you're on Raya. Uh, double check. It shouldn't be Raya on cross planes, I believe. It's no. on up oh. Okay. Try to reconnect. Oh, sorry, we are making my no Wi-Fi failover. <laughs> Curl? Yeah. No, it's on, it's on HTTP. You can access. Mm. HTTPS. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. So plan B. Okay, plan I'll grab my laptop. Last attempt. Last attempt, and we have a last resort solution on my local local setup. I will be able to show you. Go for it. Uh, yeah. No, uh, I've got it. I've got it. OK. <laughs> nice. <laughs> now, you know what it was? Network cable. Oh. <laughs> cool. Up and running. So, as I was saying, we have North Europe cluster replying currently. So, scenario one. You're going to be doing plane maintenance, whatever, on this cluster. You want to shift everything to West Europe. So you could do something as simple as, here's my JSLB, custom resource. I'm going to say this is going to West Europe. 
and a git commit away. There you go. And just to save us a bit of time, just going to run Flux reconcile on both clusters, just for us not to wait to, for Flux to sync. And with this in place, we should see that the reply will move from north to west. Let me, and when, now, West, you see? <laughs> do you want to do a quick explanation of what happened behind the scenes? Yeah, so basically uh, KGB detected that uh, uh, pods are dead on a primary cluster. Uh, and uh, thanks to the zone delegation uh, that uh, is configured uh, in environment HDNS, uh, we are able to dynamically craft the DNS responses according to the strategy from our internal core DNS that is part of the KGB and return the uh, appropriate DNS response. And the reason, well, one of the reasons why this is fast is because if you look at the public DNS zone that's behind this, this is the Azure public DNS zone that we are plugged into, Nothing changed. We're not updating records in a lot of yeah, places. That's a great point, right? We, we are not uh, using external DNS to populate it centrally. We are serving the DNS request on our own and core DNS, and only zone delegation is configured. So this NS record, GSLBNS, and a glue record that would point to the set of uh, KGB-enabled uh, cluster nodes. So we're replying straight out of the Kubernetes clusters right. where the workload is. Exactly. This was planned maintenance. Cool. What about unplanned maintenance? So we are replying from west. Let me get into that cluster and just remove replicas, which is exactly what it sounds like. Killed the app. Oh, now we're replying from north. No, no service endpoints in the West Europe cluster. Cool. So I'll just serve DNS to say, go there, North Europe. That's the one. Just like that. And honestly, we are shifting pretty fast now, now that we're out of uh, network cables. But worst case scenario, with all of DNS, TTLs in the middle and all of that, at most, this takes less than a minute. Right, Yuri? Yeah, basically, uh, to the point of that uh, we are based on DNS, so it's a great protocol, stable one, but we are also inheriting some limitations, so we are operating with a very short time to leave TTL value. For demo purposes, it's kind of 30 seconds to enable like a fast switch. In a production, I notice that people tend to raise it a bit, so it will be less aggressive, but anyway, just uh, usually, uh, it is one reconciliation loop within a Kubernetes controller overlapped with a TTL. So that's what you can expect, how, failover, uh, how fast failover will happen. Do you want to talk uh, a bit about internals? Yeah, we have uh, five minutes, and maybe I'll quite try to quickly explain how that stuff actually works. So we have a KGB controller that encapsulates the uh, core logic of the, of the solution. It continuously watches for GSLB CR, the ones that uh, we showed before. And uh, we have a very tightly coupled ingress at a standard one. Uh, an ingress is associated with a very standard Kubernetes application service and your application pods. So as I mentioned before, it's just the service endpoints, right? That's, that's the, we need no additional health check, no additional logic. If ser ser service endpoints array is empty, then the application is kind of failed mode, right? And we have an inter integral part of, uh, of the solutions that are happening in a system KGB namespace. Uh, we have, we are using DNS endpoints, CRD, and you know, like custom resource instantiations uh, that we are reusing from external DNS project. So basically, we are populating the uh, 
entries dynamically according to the global service load balancing strategy. And uh, we are also running a Cordian as a special build. It's not a Kubernetes um, system. Uh, uh, Cordian S, it's a standalone deployment that is part of KGB as a solution, the integral part. And it has a special build, a special model that is capable to read data from a, a Kubernetes uh, custom resource. So that's why it reads dynamically from Kubernetes API effectively and serves uh, the dynamic, uh, dynamically crafted responses according to the strategy. And for the integration part that uh, we discussed several times, NS record uh, plus Glue records that configures its zone delegation uh, on a HDNS. So again, in this case, it's Route 3, but as we discussed before, it can be anything. Uh, we are using external DNS also uh, as a part of the project, so it, will, it is able to automatically configure it for you in your environment. So that's what's happening in a scope of single cluster, right? What about uh, the multi-cluster kind of coordination stuff? Uh, where is the state? So. The main part, as uh, was already mentioned, is zone delegation configuration. So uh, first, on the first two like, kind of rounds of reconciliation loop, uh, clusters are figuring out the own health of the local application. And in parallel, they are configuring the zone delegation. Uh, so to actually craft a proper DNS response according to the desired GSLB strategy, we need some form of coordination. And in this case, uh, we are using the same DNS uh, we are using send, uh, environment DNS for uh, kind of each other cluster discovery, and then we are cross-polling uh, associated core DNSs for on a special FQDN for local targets. So both clusters are aware of each other healthy endpoints, and this. Uh, in this diagram, it's, uh, it's actually round robin in action, and they're merging two health, uh, health APRAs together and returning DNS response in consistent ways. The most important part is that both core DNS uh, that are responsible for the zone, effectively, they are uh, always returning a consistent response no matter which cluster is hit by the DNS client. Yeah, a little bit of CNCF health, uh, uh, landscape stats. CNCF uh, sandbox project level, pretty good stats, mm, reasonably active maintenance. We were also a part of CNCF Security Slam North America end of last year, and it very nicely affected the project. We now have a Salsa uh, in enabled, uh, we have a Cosign, SBOM, all the stuff, the same fanciest release pipeline server. Uh, we have a diverse group of maintainers, so three uh, from original APSA, one a maintainer from Transform, and one, one from Abound, me. So we got this kind of uh, uh, recommendation from CNCF Technical uh, Oversight Committee to, uh, a couple of years ago to make a group of maintainers more diverse. Uh, it have, uh, meaning like not from the single company, it happens this way. Well, uh, Effectively, it happened because a couple of apps of Fox left, including myself, but it's implementation details. Uh, and uh, roadmap, the very high level, Azure integration, you already seen it in the demo. It works, it's going to be like a next release. We just need to polish a little bit of uh, Helm chart integration and UX. A GCP, like to cover all big three. Uh, a gateway support to uh, support the newest uh, kind of next version of Ingress, and a digital to my roadmap is uh, fully available. And please, if you like the stuff, please join the project, try it out, join us in CNCF Slack channel. We have a dedicated one. We're usually very responsive. Please star us. It will really help the project with the project adoption. If you ever, ever will use KGB and you are confident to say it publicly, please uh, send a pull request to adopters MD. And any issues and PRs are welcome. So, thank you so much.